Good afternoon. A um, couple of things not purchased but um, picked up from my family home in Edinburgh. Um, kind of brought on by the, um, the Game Boy stuff from my grandparents. Um, talked a bit about the old Game Gear of mine, whose original source I can't remember. Maybe got off my cousins or something. Um, so, first of all, the said Game Gear, different from one of the other video, you know. Um, I haven't checked whether it works yet. It's got no batteries and my memory is, I can't really remember whether I checked the batteries, but what I do remember is thinking that it didn't work with batteries um, and trying it with a Sega plug, which actually, you know, I think about it, I seem to remember working with the Mega Drive. It was the same plug. Um, so, and it was the one I'd always used, so I had reason to believe it would work. I subsequently, um, you know, tried it here with the Mega Drive, the Game Gear rather, and it didn't work. So I concluded that it was broken, but I held on to it anyway because uh, it was long before I had any real thoughts about collecting or anything like that. But uh, I don't know, I just thought it was, I could. I wasn't going to throw it away and I never got around to getting it fixed or anything. It just seemed like, you just don't throw something like this away. Um, that would seem wasteful. Um, but, yeah, so I've got no battery, no covers for the back of it anymore. They are long gone. Um, uh, as I remember, this is bluer normally, isn't it? It's pretty faded looking. And the whole thing, you know, it's, it's ugh, I don't really know how these things... I'm hoping that if it works, which we'll test at the end, um, could always repurpose it as a... What do they call that? I want to say Jaws Harp or Jews Harp, but that sounds dodgy. Anyway, um, um, I'm hoping the screen and the speaker are better, if it works at all. We'll try that in a sec. Also picked up um, all of the old Game Gear games I remember, apart from Castle of Illusion, which I bought again last week. Um, some of these, you know what, actually, yeah, I can't remember. I remember buying some of these later on, you know, years ago, but after the good old days, after the original games I owned. So, Sonic on Game Gear. The, um, this is good. I, I really like the Sonic game. It's got good music. It's got, um, some, it's quite, it's a bit different. It's a bit more, I remember there's a few, like, vertical stages and there's a few auto scrollers and things like that and um kind of yeah there's some differences to the the Mega Drive version that are quite interesting. Um I'm looking forward to playing this actually because I played an awful lot of it. Not more than the Mega Drive, but I, I played more of it at a certain time I think. I played the Sega Mega Drive Sonic at my cousin's house in Ireland. Um, and I eventually inherited the Mega Drive, which my sister has at the moment. Um, but I played this on my own game here at home, so I probably, by the time I was playing Sonic at home, um, it was kind of old news to me, you know, it, it was years after I played it for the first time, whereas this it was maybe, maybe more my own experience, I don't know. Um, Good game. I like it. I'm looking forward to playing it and properly exploring it because, you know, I don't think I ever completed it. Um, this I played 
hard I hardly played this at all in the game here. Sonic 2 obviously. Um now the the chronology of um Sonic games on the Mega Drive and the Master System and their I think the Game Gear games are basically Master System ports, are they? Um maybe not. Um It kinda confuses me because Pretty sure Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Gear, the Mega Drive, was the first one. But you've got an 8-bit console that kind of predates the Mega Drive, with Sonic games coming out as well, which also seem more primitive. So I don't know. I guess uh, there, there was a little bit more in the way of um, two consoles from different generations existing concurrently back in the day, wasn't there? And I know the Master System, you know. Infamously, infamously, famously, has uh, had longevity in Brazil like nothing else. In fact, I'm pretty sure it still exists in Brazil. It's still kind of a thing. Is it Brazil? I hope it's Brazil that I'm thinking of. Um, anyway, this one is really not as good. I remember there's an annoying, stupid train cart thing that's annoying to control or just fiddly or just. Uh, I don't remember this being as good as. Short levels, not very imaginative, as I remember it, but I will play it, I'll give it a shot. <whistles> Streets of Rage, now I played this on the Mega Drive an awful lot when we were younger, and I got this, I didn't even know it existed on the Game Gear, but I got this when I was a teenager, um, thinking, well, I mean, it was probably in the same sort of <laughs> thought, thought, uh, thought kind of pattern that I've got now, you know, oh, like, get back into retro games, but um, this is quite simply just a worse version of <laughs> Streets of Rage. I didn't play it an awful lot, but it has only two characters rather than three. I'm pretty sure that I seem to remember the levels being pretty similar. can't remember how it controlled or anything like that. I will play it. Um, will I keep it? I don't know. I mean, it was, it's just not valuable to sell on, but it seems like the sort of thing I wouldn't play and isn't, you know, maybe doesn't Merit a, 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 a space in a in a curated collection, if that's what I'm looking for. Shinobi. So yep. Also on Meg the the compilation Mega Games Two on the Mega Drive, as well as Streets of Rage. That is was Revenge of Shinobi, which was I think. Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I've got that. I've got that. Shadow Dancer. Something something Shinobi. Um on the Mega Drive. I think that might be a prequel or sorry, bef uh, like the Forerunner or whatever. Do you remind of Shinobi or maybe it was a sequel to it? I don't know, it plays a bit differently, but it's quite similar. And I know there's Shinobi on the Mass System, this is called Shinobi. Shinobi, Shinobi, Shinobi. But I have a feeling that Shinobi might be a bit of a generic it, it might, it might have seem to have a memory of it just meaning something like ninja in Japanese, but I certainly don't know that it means that. I just have this faint memory of learning something like that. Um, I don't know why I'm so suspicious that this actually belongs to a series called Shinobi. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, it is pretty much the same as the game Revenge of Shinobi in kind of pattern or format. Um, I remember it being a bit, you know, it was, it was a different game to the one I played, so it wasn't just kind of a downscaled version of it, as I remember. Um, but I didn't play these games an awful lot. I, if playing the Mega Drive, the Game Gear is not a deeply uncomfortable experience visually, then, um, then I do look forward to actually exploring these games. The only other thing I have here are these spare <laughs> copies of Final Fantasy VIII and Nine. Now, what I'll do with these is a bit unclear. I was thinking what I would do is... Well, this copy of Final Fantasy VIII is not the one that I played first, but I have right here... Oh, 
here. Are you sure that's wrong? Um, this is the one that I originally bought and played first, and uh, yeah, that's the place in Edinburgh, Games Masters, Games Exchange. Um, and yeah, my friend and I really resented their. These are really difficult to remove. Um, you know, neatly. It's like. Actually, it's not that bad. You can see the residue there. It's, I've seen worse. But um, it probably will tear if I try and do it anymore. But this also, as it says there, this game is sold without instructions. Yeah, no instructions for this. And the case is a bit beat up. So, and some of the discs are a bit... But they all work because I have played it recently. So these discs all work. Um, this has instructions, so... I mean... I don't know, I've not played this one now, I've not, I'm not in a rush to... Oh, and the, the teeth on this box are all much nicer. I'm going to check the discs on these, actually. don't know if you're supposed to blow anything. don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But, um... There appear to be no scratches. So... And it's not like a copy of Final Fantasy VIII is hard to come by. So if I can bear to part with my original copy of Final Fantasy VIII, which is in far worse condition, then this is the replacement, I suppose. I don't know why I didn't do that. don't know whether I didn't, why I didn't just sort of make that decision in the first place, as I obviously didn't, because the one I put away, which I got from my my girlfriend, um, who had just it lying around with a bunch of old PlayStation stuff for her brothers. I got that from her ages ago. She was like, you know, just have it. She sold the PlayStation for 20 quid maybe or something. Um, yeah, obviously put this aside as like, well, do something with that. I'll sell it or, I don't know, keep it. Um, I mean, there isn't much to compare, and there's not much point in keeping this box and taking elements from this. This is just better condition. I don't know. I kind of feel like I'll kind of miss that that sticker there. It's kind of perverse, but maybe I'll sort make my mind up about that at some point. Um, and Final Fantasy IX, which is platinum, whereas my Ordinary copy of it is not. And you know what? I can't remember. I've had a couple of copies of Final Fantasy IX because one of my copies it would keep crashing at this a few points and I think disc two. My friend and I who are who were replaying it in <coughs> the first year of university actually um together bought a new copy. So that, well, I could finish it. I think he was, he'd already finished it. I thought he was playing it before me. Who knows? Actually, I mean, when we replayed it in a third year of university, that was eventually what our friendship solely revolved around. Uh, not quite so exclusive now. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'm now wondering about which copy works. I'm not in a rush to replay. Well, I mm, just don't have the time to replay Final Fantasy IX now, though. But the desire is always there. Definitely one of my favourite games. Top five. Whatever that would be. It would be, it would be in it. It would have to be in it. Final Fantasy IX. Very, very special place in my heart for Final Fantasy IX. Anyway, that will do for now. Except I've got this. Cable. Got the plug. It's turned on. 
Let's see if it works. <laughs> I kind of don't think it's going to work, but I hope it does. Ooh! <laughs> cool. That's nice. God, what is wrong with these old Sega phones? Um, I just had a little memory. I seem to remember the screen being the thing that didn't work on this. Like, not the other one's hard to see, but I think that's just because the condition of the screen. You know, the, the glass or the, the bit in front of it. I think the screen doesn't come on on this. So let's put a game in and find out. But then maybe that was a contrast thing, because that's what I found with, like, when I was playing that one. Oh, it's not promising, is it? That's volume. There is no sound coming out of that. Try different games. Maybe we should do some of the old um, Schwab, but it's, if it's a screen issue, then I don't really know what it's going to do. I'm adjusting the brightness and nothing is happening. That's a shame. Oh well, that's so weird. Um, although, yeah.